Hello world! In today's tutorial, we're going to make Fetch AI agents communicate with each other. Fetch AI agents can communicate locally or remotely. I'm going to show you examples in Python. Before we start, I want to emphasize that the purpose of my tutorials is not that you code parallel to me. For this matter, I always upload the full code to my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Now, let's get to the point. If you haven't watched my previous Fetch AI tutorial, please do so because this one is an upgrade of that one. In the previous tutorial, we covered some basics like how to create an agent. It's mandatory because today we will use this knowledge to make two agents communicate with each other. There are two types of communication, local and remote. We will cover both. First, install the uagents Python SDK by running pip install agents. Let's take a look at how local communication works. We have imports at the top. Then we have a class for the message, which will enable us to send and receive messages. In this example, we have two agents, Alice and Bob. Each has a unique seed. Alice has on message task, which assigns Alice the following job. When she receives Bob's message, we want her to print Bob's message and send a message back to Bob. Unlike Alice, Bob has two tasks, on interval and on message task. On interval, task assigns Bob the following job. We want Bob to send a message to Alice every four seconds. On message, task assigns Bob the following job. When he receives Alice's message, we want him to print Alice's message. You might ask why Alice has only one task while Bob has two. It's simple logic. We want both Alice and Bob to respond when they receive a message. So both of them need to wait for messages to come. And that's why both of them message tasks. But only one of them needs to start the conversation. It's Bob who starts the conversation. And that's why he has an on interval task. At the bottom, we use the bureau class, which collects all agents and orchestrates their execution. Let's run this local communication example. So, every four seconds, Bob starts the conversation by greeting Alice. Alice lets us know she received a message from Bob, responds by greeting Bob, and Bob lets us know he received a message from Alice. This works great. Alice and Bob are communicating locally. Let's stop this example. Let's take a look how remote communication works. The first thing that is different is that we now have two Python scripts, one for Alice and one for Bob. Before we had Alice and Bob both in one Python script, if we take a look at Alice's or Bob's code, you can see that the core is identical. Alice has only one task, while Bob has two tasks. The differences are the following. First, we don't use the bureau because we only have one agent per Python script. Second, we need to give Bob Alice's address because now they are not communicating locally. Keep in mind that we are now looking at how remote communication works. By the way, we learned how to get Alice's address in the previous Fetch AI tutorial. Third, and the biggest difference between local and remote communication, we need to use Almanac contracts. Almanac contracts are the core of Fetch AI. The Almanac is a smart contract developed and deployed on the Fetch AI blockchain, which provides us a way to make agents communicate remotely. In simple terms, if we want Alice and Bob to be able to communicate remotely, we need to register them in the Almanac contracts eat in their own Almanac contract. Once your agent is registered in the Almanac contract, it starts to live on the Fetch AI network. Let's continue with code breakdown. To be able to register Alice and Bob in the Almanac contracts, we need to provide an endpoint for both of them. Setting endpoints was not necessary while Alice and Bob were communicating locally. An endpoint is the address to which other agents can send messages and to which a particular agent will be listening. It's important to set a different port. Alice will be listening on port 8000, and Bob will be listening on port 8001. Now, you might be a bit confused how this code registers Alice or Bob in the Almanac contract. The Wagents package takes care of this. The whole process is started by running this run function. This run function runs the agent, but more importantly, this registers the agent to the Almanac when code is initialized. Let's run this remote communication example. We need to run both agents, Alice and Bob. Let's run Alice first and Bob second. I've ran both Alice and Bob before, so you can see that they have already been registered in the Almanac contract. 
When you run them for the first time, you will see this, a console saying that registering on Almanac contract is in progress. So every two seconds, Bob starts the conversation by greeting Alice. Alice lets us know she received a message from Bob, responds by greeting Bob and Bob, lets us know he received a message from Alice, identical to the local communication example, but this time it's remote communication. How cool is that? That's it. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial was helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.